I'm Katherine Ambrose, America's Senior Home Coach, uh, and we're so glad to have you here today. You picked a lovely day to come to Botanica. My mother and I were out here just recently and walked through. Tulips are blooming. It smells so good out there. And so we may wrap, if we can, for the first time ever in six years, we might wrap a little early because we don't want you to have an excuse to not go out there and at least go see one tulip, <laughs> one tulip bed. Just go out and see it. It's so awesome. I've got amazing news. Well, it's not really my news. It's Oxford Vista. Oxford Vista, formerly KMH, they were rescued by Oxford Senior Living. They purchased that beautiful, beautiful treasure of a historical campus. <laughs> this is my friend Jamie Morrow, and you are ha hosting a party and you're inviting everybody. We are, we are hosting a grand opening on April 27th from 11 to 2. We are going to have at live music, food, and tours of the community. We're going to have independent living, assisted living, and memory care options available. So we also have a 7% discount for all vets. So I hope to see you guys all there on April 27th. And if you have any more questions, uh, you could come and see me and get my card. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so you've got invitations over there at the tables, but you also you put them around. Yes, I did. I put them on all the tables. Who's going to go to this party? I'm going. Who else is going? I'm going. April 27th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll be some of the first people in there. I can't wait. So we helped everybody move out a little over a year ago, and it was so sad. It was such a beautiful place. Um, but people supported each other, residents supported each other, and vowed to stay in touch. Maybe some of them will move back in. So, all right, that is a, a really wonderful set of good news. And you all said you wanted to go have a meetup over there. Last month you said you wanted to go see it. So now we've got a special party to go to. All right, April showers. Um, bring spring sprucing is what we're doing today. Michelle Lloyd, are you going to come up? Michelle helped put this presentation together. She's the gerontologist uh, that has joined our leadership team. Could you welcome Michelle? <laughs> Bretta, I might have to have you push the buttons until we figure this out up here. Could you just give, us, give it a push just for the first few? So my husband, daughter, and I uh, are realtors. We started this out kind of as a real estate thing because we saw that our clients needed a lot more information, and we just felt like we need to learn about this too. And it's turned into a whole big thing. So now we're a nonprofit. We have two television shows. We have Empowering Seniors, which is on every Friday night. It reruns Saturday and Sunday. And then usually those episodes will rerun 11 weeks later, we produce 22 episodes a season. And that show's done really well because of the topics, because they're the topics that are important. And then uh, we launched a second show, a sister show. This is my sister, not, for, not really, but my good friend stand up. <laughs> Mindy East with Ageless Enthusiasm. What is your next show gonna be on? Oh, and she, she's a jokester, so she brought you a joke too. On the next stage of enthusiasm, I speak with two men who face death only to become stronger than before and now inspire others with their books. Daniel Gomez is an author, motivational speaker, entrepreneur, and business trainer, but once upon a time, he tried to end his life at age 18. His biggest takeaway was that God has a bigger plan for his life than he could ever imagine on his own, and nothing including his failures, could keep him from achieving that purpose. Kurt Gormley went to the doctor just for a routine and ended up in the hospital for 83 days with a rare form of cancer. Kurt not only survived, but he thrived. And here's his interesting story on a week from tonight, um, as he calls it, wrestling with an alligator in the cancer ward. 
And then I do have a little, little fun thing. It's now the time. So those weren't the jokes. So here's the joke. Well, it wasn't supposed to, you just gave away the punchline. <laughs> An elderly Florida lady did her shopping and upon returning to her car, found four males in the act of leaving with her vehicle. She dropped her shopping bags and drew her handgun, proceeding to scream at the top of her lungs, I have a gun and I know how to use it. Get out of the car, now. The four men didn't wait for a second threat. They got out and ran like mad. The lady, somewhat shaken, then proceeded to load her shopping bags into the back of the car and got into the driver's seat. She was so shaken that she could not get her key in the ignition. She tried and tried, but then she realized why. It was for the same reason she had wondered why was there a football, a frisbee, and two 12 packs of beer in the front seat. A few minutes later, she found her own car parked four <laughs> or five spaces further down. She loaded her bags into her own car and drove to the police station to report her mistake. The sergeant to whom she told the story couldn't stop laughing, and he pointed to the other end of the counter where four pale men were reporting a carjacking <laughs> by a mad elderly woman <laughs> described as white, less than five feet tall, glasses, curly white hair, and bearing a large, carrying a large handgun. <laughs> no charges were filed. The moral of the story, if you're having a senior moment, make it memorable. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. I bet she had a white, a black, or a gray car. <laughs> a white Crown Vic. So I drive a, a bright, obnoxious, hydro blue vehicle that I can't possibly make that kind of mistake on. <laughs> so that, that's how you plan for those moments, is you prepare yourself for success. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what we talk about every month. Who knew she had a second career? We talked about that before. She's entering her entrepreneurial stage of her life in uh, auto theft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, on Empowering Seniors this week, we're talking about um, low vision rehab. I've been to uh, Envision like four times. I thought I knew kind of what they did, but on the fourth time, I'm like, oh, low vision rehab. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're going to talk about. So maybe if I go again, I'll learn even more. Uh, but I think I learned a lot, and we're going to talk about that this Friday. And then the following week, we're talking about hearing loss. So we're doing eyes and then ears. And uh, I think that was a good episode. And if you look carefully, you might spot my mother um, modeling getting her hearing tested. We had to fake it that day, but she did go back and get her hearing tested my, this last Monday. All right, and Michelle Lloyd, I introduced, she's our gerontologist and senior housing specialist. And, um, and boy is she. So thank you for helping us put this together today. All right, um, please silence your phones if you can. We understand you may have people that may need to get a hold of you. So we totally understand that. But if you can just maybe not have it ring super loud and have your conversation in front of the whole room, uh, excuse yourself and go to the back. Or if you can text, that would be fantastic. All right, let's have our veterans come up to the front of the room. Any veterans that would like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, we would love to have you do that. Because, thank you, because we all know we won the lottery just by living here. And, thank, and we thank you for your service. Thank you. I think that's so awesome that you're offering 
a discount for veterans at Oxford Vista. That's really awesome. All right, you wanna cover this? Sure. sure. Okay, so you notice that our topic was April showers brings spring sprucing. And it was really interesting, the questions that we got in return when we announced this topic. Um, is it about gardening? Is it about cleaning? Is it about, we kind of kept the mystery about this. So I wanted to look up, where did that come from? April showers bring May flowers. I thought, you know, is that a, a Kansas thing? If it were Kansas, it would probably have something more to do with the wind than the rain. And so it's actually from the year 1610. So can you believe that we're all still using a saying that is over 400 years old? So historians believe this phrase may date back to a 1610 poem which contained the lines, sweet April showers do, do spring May flowers. So for a 400 year old phrase. Very cool, and Kansas is right on time, as you'll <laughs> see when you go out there and look at the gardens today. What we know is that as we age, sometimes we tend to worry. Well, we kind of worry about things our whole life, right? But then it kind of gets magnified, especially when maybe you're retired and you don't maybe have just all the daily distractions and so you can really be focused on being worried, worried about the family, worried about things around the house, maybe worried about the yard. So we want to talk about kind of the traditional thinking of spring cleaning and pruning and, and all that that often comes with home ownership yeah. or if you're renting, keeping an eye on how well the landlord's contractors are doing and why does that stress us out if they don't do it the way we think they should do it? Because it really does. Mm -hmm. And it's true, you pay a lot to be there. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes I think that um, it can be too that we, um, we want to be involved and engaged and have a voice and um, extend our influence. And so we appreciate all of you guys being here to be engaged because staying engaged in things is what keeps you healthy and alive, improves your longevity, quality of life, what we call health span. We want you to have an increased health span because it's one thing to grow old, it's another thing to grow old and still feel great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Bretta, I might, I thought I got it to push once, but if you could push it for me, that would be great. I'll let you begin. Oh, well. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, sometimes I repel technology. Okay, well we'll let Bretta try to okay. figure out how to advance it, the screen okay. there. there. There we go, okay. So, we'll talk a little bit about spring cleaning. And so, when you were growing up, how did you know it was time for spring cleaning? Did your mother or grandmother typically do something or bring something out? Was there something that would happen where you're, as a child, you're like, oh no, it's time. Anybody care to share? Wash, Wash the, the windows. windows. So you see my slide? When my mother would start balling up newspaper, I knew my weekend was about to be ruined. Ruined. And so for us, it was getting out the vinegar in the newspaper. So she said cleaning windows. Anybody have something else? Yes, ma'am. Her, Her mother would wash the walls. Which, what would she wash them with? Uh -huh. Yeah. A cobweb. Oh, no, not a cobweb. Yeah, wipe the walls down. Yeah. Probably a good idea. Yep. Any that was my grandma she's talking about. <laughs> I did the carpets this morning. I cleaned them. Yep. Yeah. I see steam clean carpets or shampooed carpets? Steam clean, steam cleaned. You already did that today? Yes, I did that to <laughs> place. Is he two days behind? ago, <laughs> and it was ready for it. Yes. Hey, buddy, I'm impressed. So you were so productive, and you showed up. I appreciate that. Okay. I vacuum twice, you know, because when you steam clean, uh, you want to make sure that it's all up before you yeah. steam clean. You don't want to make mud pies. A, no. a great day to do it, too. Thanks for uh -huh. being here after okay. all that, too. I appreciate that. Yeah, we have one Makes over here. Makes us look good when you come take a seat here and show up, and we love to see you every single month. 
Who else has something to share? My mother would lemon oil all the furniture. Yes, who can, who can close their eyes and smell that smell as she said that, right? Yeah, lemon oil, the furniture, lemon oil, the cabinets. I have another one here. And paneling, lemon oil, the paneling. My mother was a firm believer in putting us to work, and it didn't matter whether they were girls or boys. She made no distinction. We had the mop, we had the wax, and we had to clean everything before we could do anything to do it with. I think maybe we were raised by the same woman. Now see, my grandma, she had us working any other time of the year, but when it was time for her deep clean, she kicked us out of the house. Yeah, she did not want us, under, she did not want us underfoot. <laughs> okay, didn't a lot of us grow up with being out of the house? Like, go out and play. You were lucky if you got to go out and play, unless you were like us inside doing manual labor. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's fond memories with spring cleaning, though, too. It was kind of a big, big event in the house. So. OK. <laughs> we'll push the button again. We need like a special. These are, this is how we remember what we're going to talk about. So you think these slides are for you? They're for us. But we did try to make them look cute. Okay, so we have a tabletop exercise. So of course you gotta do homework with me. Is it cutting out pretty bad or can you hear me? Okay. It's doing good. So talk amongst yourselves at your table. So for your home right now, which room are you dreading spring cleaning? Right, which room, when you walk by it, you just close the door? and then keep on going and on to something you like. So take about two or three minutes. We're gonna see if we all hate the same room. Hey, ready? One, two, three, cha-cha-cha. Okay, so we're gonna start talking to some of the tables to see what you discovered. And I have a oh, there, Yep, there's another mic up there. Maybe that'll work for you. Okay. I have a hunch that we all have similar rooms that we don't like working on. All right, who wants to share? Um, something that was revealed at the table, the person can remain anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see if we don't have some similarities. What are the rooms or the projects that you just work real hard to not think about? Hey, someone at this table does not want to tackle their bedroom. Someone. Okay. And, you know, we had somebody like that a couple years ago. This just made me think of that, that um, our move management team went and helped them declutter and decorate a bedroom, and it was like a whole new world for them. They just loved it. So yeah. sometimes we can help with special projects like that. So what did this table decide? You have a room that you're avoiding at home? Nice to see. Kitchen. Kitchen, right? Pull out those drawers, get to the very back, find some. My father, we cleaned his kitchen, barbecue sauce in the refrigerator from 1986. <laughs> Guess what year my little brother was born? 1986. We told Jordan, that's your inheritance. <laughs> Vintage barbecue sauce. We, we find dated stuff all the time. You know, you think, oh my gosh, didn't we go through this last year? And you yeah. just find these odd things that are so old. And then, of course, when people move, they can't believe sometimes how yeah. old things are. Yeah. All right, what else? Anybody over here have something to share? Something that came? Talk about the older people. Because just because you're old doesn't mean you can't do something. You yeah. know? They think they're going to put us in a box and you're going to control our life, but no. Yeah. And I think we find, too, that no matter what age we are, we have tasks that we avoid. And if you think about having your kids tidy up their area. Mm -hmm. Did you guys have a room that you agreed on, or what did you find out? We pretty much said the kitchen. Thing. The kitchen. Okay. So two. We didn't know what spring cleaning was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, oh, okay, so two for the kitchen, one for the bedroom. 
the office, which has become the place where things go when oh, we don't yeah. know what to do with them. And it's tax season right now. I bet a few of us are in our office rethinking our life choices lately. Who has a room where things go when you don't want to deal with them or a drawer? Yeah, you got, you're, you're lucky if it's a drawer and not a room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, who else has something to share? All right, did this table come up with a room that we're avoiding? Garage. Garage. I don't know, we have one, two, three, four gentlemen at this table. I wonder if that had to do with that answer. <laughs> garage. Okay. A lot of times it's the women that report the garage. If you're allowed out in it. They'll, they'll call and say, <laughs> we need to do something about my husband's shop. What does your husband think? Well, he doesn't know it's coming yet. <laughs> okay, did you guys select a room or have any feedback? Basement storage room. Basement storage room. Someone else said that, and I said it, the basement storage room is where good intentions go to die. <laughs> the projects, the crafts, the forgotten about things. I guess we're on our own without our cheat notes. I think okay. we can wing it. We can it do it. We because do it. our PowerPoint seems to be gone. You know, I spent a whole 15 minutes making that point. <laughs> and the microphone doesn't like me either. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to bring up is that we often deal with homeowners that feel bad because they're siding, they're edging, their lawn, their flower gardens, their shrubbery. Um, aren't kept up to the standards that they had forever. And as things start maybe declining a little bit more, it becomes a real source of pain pulling up in that driveway and thinking, oh, my siding, mm -hmm. or yeah. I just, we just can't keep the lawn up like we used to, or our lawn service doesn't do it the way dad did it. I, I have a question for the group. Are there any other women here that when it becomes mowing season, they become a, a, a mistress to the yard? <laughs> the, the yard takes priority. My husband took a contract out of state, and he would have me send him pictures oh. of his yard. <laughs> I was a little jealous. So, but Catherine's right. Those standards are high. They're high. Yeah. And then think of all the time and effort you've put into a project like your landscaping, your yard, mm -hmm. your garden. And so it's, it's hard when it doesn't live up to your standards it and is, you have to pass it off to someone else. Right. Okay. So here's, here's some real talk because that's what we're all about is candid conversations. Real talk. Do you, have you ever spoken to someone that says, I'm just so mad because my son knows I need help with this and he isn't coming over here to help. Okay. How about the opposite? I just feel so bad because I have to call my son all the time. Okay, oh, <laughs> I have to go help her son. That's why people hang on to their garages and their shops and all their equipment because dad can come to the rescue. Something's wrong with the water heater, the plumbing, the car, whatever it is. Dad's ready to grab his toolbox and come on over. And so our identity is so closely tied to our house mm -hmm. and our stuff. Yep. Our house, our stuff, and our independence. I once came out of the house, and my two young boys had our 84-year-old neighbor up in the tree retrieving their boomerang. And I'm mad at my boys, and, sh and his wife is furious with him. So um, next, we, we want to introduce some new education partners that we have. And first, we're going to start off with a round of applause for our education partners that are here today. We love having you guys come and set up your tables and interact. So let's give them a hand. Yeah, because I'm telling you guys, there's no way we can do it without them. In fact, it's very hard to do it with their help. Yeah. This is very, um, it requires a lot of time, money, and energy to put this on. We love doing it. There's absolutely no way we could do it without your support. We really thank you. So Lifeway Mobility, Logan Winter. Hello. You help people age in place better with some of your stuff that you have. Tell us real quickly what you do. Yes, of course. Um, so really, uh, to summarize it, we help families stay safe at home. So when it comes to home is home, I want to stay home. I'm just having a little trouble 
getting up and down the stairs. I heard of this past week. The hinges are there. They're just getting a little rusty uh, when it comes to the <laughs> knees. Um, and so whether it be adding in a handrail up the stairs, whether it be a stair lift, whether it be a couple grab bars in and out of the shower, out of the bathtub, that step over the bathtub, um, near the toilet area, a ramp getting in and out of the house, you name it. We specialize in all home accessibility equipment, keeping people safe at home. Okay, thank you. And of course, your bathroom has to be decluttered. Rooms have to be decluttered. So that's why we're talking about spring sprucing. So, so there's room to be mobile and to get help that you need. Handrails are so important because when you need something, if you don't have it, it's too late, right? If you need a handrail to be there and it's not there, so we want to be proactive. And we have a huge crew from Oxford Villa today. Thank you so much. Well, Oxford Senior Living, I should say, because we're representing all the properties. So where are you from? Uh, my name's Ryan, and I'm with the Oxford Vista. Okay, the brand new historical campus brought back. We can't wait to be there. What, and what, your, your name's Ryan. Yes. Okay, thanks for being here. Is this your first time to be here? It is. Can you give Ryan an applause? applause? Thank you. Okay, I see your name is Courtney, and you're with Glenn Carr. Tell us what Glenn Carr is. So Glenn Carr House, that's the Alzheimer's and Dementia Assisted Living in Derby. All right, and you guys stay pretty full, yes. like all the way full. And so if you think that memory care in Derby is something that you might need to know about at some point, it'd probably be good to call Courtney, find out about it now, and maybe be on a list so that when the time comes, you're closer. All right, Jamie, Jamie and I partnered together to help with the KMH transitions, helping all those people find homes and get moved. So Jamie has a lot to do with how well all of that happened. And um, I think that it, just the connection with Oxford Vista opening back up is amazing. So Jamie, you were unbelievably supportive and fantastic for all of that. So, and I'm so happy that you're with Oxford now. I'm just so happy. This is really a full circle, beautiful time, and I can't wait to come out and see Oxford Vista. So you're at Oxford Grand now, so tell them a little bit about that. So Oxford Grand has assisted living and memory care. We're at 29th and Mays, um, right next to our neighbor, Oxford Villa. I'm Des, and I am her neighbor at Oxford Villa. So we offer independent living, um, and then we have that transition available to Oxford Grand next door or to Glen Carr and Derby. Thank you, ladies. I know you aren't able to stay for the whole thing today, but please give them applause for supporting us year after year. You guys are amazing. All right, and you are coming up on stage in just a second, so we'll bring you. He's like, apparently, you didn't tell him that, Michelle. Actually, <laughs> Phil, if you want to head up here now, you are the star of the show. So please welcome our newest partner. So it's Phil and Shelly Davis with Harmony Home Concepts. Very good. And I'm walking yes. over here to catch the coffee man. Can you believe we have an attorney that brings you all this delicious coffee? Well, good morning, everyone. We are uh, Fleece and Gooey, Colson and Kitch. We're a full service law firm. We've got 25 attorneys. And so we can help clients in a variety of different areas. Um, but we have a team, great team, that specializes in estate planning. Uh, we also help with probate and trust administration. And then if maybe there's situations where maybe planning hasn't been put in place, we can help with guardianships and conservatorships and those sorts of things as well. But full service law firm, Fleece and Gooing, uh, happy to be here and, and be a part of this organization. And how Thank long has Fleece and Gooing been in, in business, do you know? 1886. We trace our roots back. Wow. Uh, been in downtown Wichita the 1886. entire time. Wow. That says something. Mm -hmm. That says something. Thank you for being here, Jason. Brian Spear on our board of directors. He helps with placement and home health questions. Thanks, Brian. Of course. Thank you. Uh, if anybody has any placement questions, want to have any free um, consultations, just reach out to us. We'd love to meet. What is placement? We talk in all these weird words. What is that? So placement is when sometimes somebody's not going to be safe at home any longer or they need to know what resources to bring to make them safe at home. Sometimes we do the assessment and we find out that home's not going to be the best place and we need to find a, a new location for a new home. So we want to just sit down, we'll discuss those services with you, 
find the right location. Generally speaking, uh, in fact, in the ones that we've done more recently, we tour one or two places and then you fall in love. So um, we're, our team is very, very good at this. Um, if you want to stay at home, we also bring home resources like home health or in-home care, that sort of thing, to help make sure that you are safe there. Fantastic. So great way to age in place and have plan B um, or when the time is right, somebody you can rely on. You do a medical assessment, financial assessment, and a social assessment. What does a social assessment mean? So the social assessment really helps us tie into what communities or what services are you really needing to thrive, not just live, but really thrive where you are. Uh, we want to know if you are a big bingo person, then we want to make sure that you have opportunities to play bingo. Um, if you're like, I don't care about bingo, I want to play cards or do woodworking, well, what communities can offer that, right? So we want to make sure that we're tying all of that in and the right social aspect, right? The right uh, communication, the right types of people that you're going to feel at home with. Um, when you change living situations, we want to make sure that you're not just stuck in your room, that you're actually out and enjoying all the amenities that communities have to offer. Yeah, we want people to have more independence, not less, because sometimes people stay at home because they want to be independent, but at some point for some people, they gain tremendous independence by making a move and it's a whole new fresh start and a happy life, that's what we're looking for. And then we have ladies from Providence. So we're Providence Home Health and Hospice. We've been, um, we're actually celebrating our 10 year anniversary this year. And we are one of the last locally owned agencies in Wichita. This is Brandy, she's our hospice liaison. Shelly's our chaplain, and I'm a home health liaison. Wow, we got the chaplain here too, so that's really cool. So what does the chaplain do in hospice? Okay, well, um, I am there from the beginning when we admit people and just try to help them get to a place where they're comfortable. Um, death can be scary, as we all know, and there's always issues that we don't address until it, that, you know, it comes. So, um, yeah, for the whole family, um, we support the family, we support their relationships, um, we uh, work with their churches or their spiritual community, and so we, we're out there doing a lot. And we do bereavement for 13 months after a death, so, so I will bug you for 13 months. <laughs> because people do need support. So thank you for indulging us on that. We don't get to spotlight our sponsors very often, and so I thought it and might be a good day to do that. It's, okay. it's always good to give the people that help pay the bills their, their due. So thank you. Give them all a, a round of applause. Because of them, we're able to come and, and cut up for all of you. So. I mean, I can be pretty loud, but no. Nope. <laughs> it's always good to have this. Can you hear me now okay? All right, so we're going to um, talk a little bit about our newest education partner. And so this is Phil Davis with Harmony Home Concepts. And Phil is a very interesting individual. I'm going to brag about him a little bit because he is a certified aging in place specialist. Doesn't that sound pretty cool? And so Phil, Kick us off by explaining what a certified aging in place specialist is. All right, very good. And then just put it right up to your lips. And this one works better. There we go. Well, thank you, Michelle. Uh, yes, I'm Phil Davison, a certified aging in place specialist. Uh, if you're familiar with the National Association of Home Builders, NAHB, in Wichita, we've got a group um, that's called the uh, Wichita Area Builders Association. And so we're part of a remodelers group within that group. And so part of the certification that the National Association of Home Builders has is helping uh, remodelers learn how to help people stay in their home longer with what's called adaptive access or certified aging in place training. So that's really what I've gone through. It's a training of understanding not only the physical aspects of what's required in a home, but also the emotional aspects of making changes to your home, um, of realizing that I may need something that I don't want, um, or I may need something that's going to keep me safe, but I still don't want it uh, to work with. 
And so making those changes in your home uh, can be difficult to understand. And so within that realm, as a certified aging in place specialist, um, I can come into your home, uh, take a look at just simple things. Again, similar to what Logan does, we overlap in some simple areas, but we go beyond um, uh, just adaptive access in the areas. So one of the areas we focused on is being able to, how many people didn't have, have a kitchen? You guys have a kitchen? Every, does everyone well, have a kitchen? Who, if you have a kitchen, raise your hand. If you don't have a kitchen, I'm going to come help you out after the talk. <laughs> so, so in your kitchen, when was the last time you were on your knees in your kitchen trying to look into the cabinets? Okay, yesterday? Sorry. Yeah. Well, part of what we offer is going to be custom slide-out shelves that bring out that space that's already in your cabinets and bring it out to you. Um, because many of our clients, you know, are downsizing or even in their smaller home or larger home. That space is hidden. Um, it maybe wasn't hidden a few years ago, but it becomes hidden over the time. And so those are areas to help you with that, as well as custom closets. And we also have a handyman service uh, that can help you with the small home repairs uh, of your home also. I'm wondering how many people in their kitchens get up on step ladders routinely. A step stool, a step ladder, or the best is you step up on something, and then you get your knees up on the counter, and then you stand on the counter. It sounds like you're speaking from experience. Yeah. And so the whole idea is age in place safely so that you maybe don't have to move, or where's the best place to age in place? So if you do make a move, getting your new place all set up uh, for adaptability. So Phil, how long have you been doing this kind of work? Uh, started in business in 05 um, with a handyman franchise, and uh, soon after that got the certified aging in place specialist, realizing that that people are obviously getting older and and staying uh, old longer, and some people cannot take care of the home anymore like they used to. So when I got into it back in 05, realizing that this is an industry for one that cannot be outsourced. Uh, that is how I lost my job in the corporate world was outsourced. And so I realized that this is an industry that requires hands-on in the customer's home, uh, taking care of people, as well as an industry to take care of the home for younger people that didn't grow up learning to take care of their home. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked to some realtors, and they definitely say that you know, when someone buys a home, they're thinking they're done, um, not realize okay. they've got to maintain that home over the years okay. of, of working with it. Very good. Okay, so aging in place specialist. Now, that's not just some nice words you put up there. That means something. And uh, so can you tell them what type of professionals get an aging in place specialist designation and how it's prepared you to do what you do? So in order to become the certified aging in place specialist, it's also known as a CAPS designation, just CAPS, C-A-P-S, C -A -P -S. okay. Yes. And so, again, the National Association of Home Builders, you must be a member of the uh, National Association of Home Builders. And then, again, I'm a member of the Wichita, uh, Wichita Area Builders. And if there's things that we cannot do for a client, we recommend another member of the Builders Association. Not that there can't be someone else in Wichita that could do it for you, but when you choose someone within the Builders Association, you're choosing someone who's choosing to be a member, choosing to stand by ethics, choose to uh, live by standards. Um, and so within that, uh, and the National Association of Home Builders also has many designations for remodelers. Um, and so one of them that makes sense to me was going to be the, the Certified Aging Place Specialist. Um, there's probably about five or six of us in Wichita that have gone through that certification. We each serve different levels of remodeling. Some do complete mm -hmm. home building. Uh, some do larger remodels, and I chose to focus on the, on the lower side of just the smaller side of remodeling. And repairs. thank goodness, because people really do need that. But sometimes it's occupational therapist and physical therapist. I uh, teach a class every morning to realtors in all 50 states and Canada, and some of the realtors are going through the program, and one just went to one, and she said, everybody else in my class is either an occupational therapist or physical therapist. So it's a blending of um, expertise, it's multidisciplinary, and it involves universal design. Who's heard of universal design? Okay, <laughs> Phil? 
What is universal design? Well, universal design is walking into a home at any age, and you can benefit from what is there. Having handrails going up your stairs. Anybody can use that. So it's universal design for any age can come into your home, young or old. You're not able to, you're not looking at it saying, oh, wow, that home's built for someone old. Or that handbar is for someone old. No, things blend in at any age, realizing that a wider hallway from three feet to four feet, anybody can benefit from that. A wider doorway, a bathroom doorway being 24 inches, well, if you had a 30, 36 inch doorway, anybody would enjoy that, whatever age they have. So you're building a home for universal design that you can move into it when you're young, benefit from all those things, never change anything, so by the time you do require some of those aspects you don't think of, it's already in place. You're living in the home with a universal design for universe for anybody to work with. <laughs> if you build or do upgrades, remodels that incorporate universal design, the challenge is, is that anybody's going to love it and that it increases the value of your home. So that's the idea that keeps you safe, but these are also things that increase the value of your home because everybody would love these improvements. And then we're talking about sprucing, and so we got some before and after, but go ahead, I'd like you to share what you were gonna share. Well, also the aspect about, I've had many people ask me, well, I've only got one bathroom in my home, one sh uh, a tub, but I really don't use the tub. I'd like to turn that tub into a shower only, but I hear it's gonna decrease the value of my home. One bar. Okay. In yeah, my perspective, yeah. I'm thinking, whose home is it? Uh, it's yeah. your home. Who cares what the value is afterward? But, as Catherine's saying, likely, when you do convert it, the next person buying your home is gonna appreciate having that tub to shower uh, work with. Because again, we've got this huge group of people who are aging and will benefit from that tub to shower. And if they don't like it, let them convert it back. But if you wanna stay in your home, enjoy the home safely where you're at, convert that tub to a shower, make it continue to be your home, and when you need to sell it, it'll probably go just as easy as sell with a tub. Because remember, the population really is aging. Who's a baby boomer in here? A lot. So baby boomers are the generation that is primarily downsizing, but also baby boomer parents are, are downsizing still. But baby boomers are downsizing now, some Gen X are downsizing now. Did you know that the youngest baby boomers, the baby baby boomers, are all going to be 65 years of age uh, in the year 2030? A little bit of trivia, because you know I like to spice things up. If you had to guess how many baby boomers are turning 65 every day, what would your guess be? Shout it out. Every day, 15 million, he said. Now, now he's saying he doesn't know. It's okay. Any others? 100,000? Any more? 10,000. Oh, I think somebody read, pre read before the class. Yes, 10,000. 10,000 people a day are turning 65. So you can see where Phil's services would be really needed. If you want to have universal design components added to your home. You have a little competition because there's so many people that need the same things that you need. If you want the loveliest apartment at Oxford Grand or any of these other places, um, you have competition. And so that's one of the things we have to think about too because a lot of times we think, well, I'm not ready yet. I don't need that yet. But the thing is, is that you are going, you're competing with people that, um, do need it now and um, or are planning for the future. And so if you plan, plan everything out in advance, which most people don't do. Jason, how many people don't plan in advance? Any idea? I heard a statistic yesterday, 92%. Even when they come to seminars, 92% don't plan in advance. I talked to a lady that she is a global educator 
on um, aging, and she counsels families that are in a complete crisis mode. Those aren't the words she used. If you can think about something hitting a fan, it was more like that. It was that mode. She said, they call me and they're in the mm mode. And um, she said, now, what's interesting is 31% of the families that I talk to, when they have a 30-minute consult with me, I will tell them, look, we could almost call you a proactive client if you take action now. But invariably, they'll say, oh, no, 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 we don't need to do that yet. Or mom and dad are doing fine. And so they just wait till they become part of the 92% show. Can we hold one of these like at 7 o'clock at night and then we can say the bad words? Would Botanica <laughs> let us do that? Like happy hour and bad words? But I digress. So behind you, Phil, and I'll give you the mic in just a moment, is one of your before pictures. This is before someone reached out to you for help. So tell us a little bit about what we see going on here. Well, this is under a bathroom vanity, OK? Many times under that vanity is just a big hole that you toss things in. And they keep going to the back. You put them in the front. They keep getting pushed back. You maybe have to scramble to get something from the back. Well, that gets pushed to the front, and things get rotated around. Never see things in the back again. <laughs> Looks like some travel bags in there. Um, what's that say? Sandwich bags uh, are in there as well. And so this was one area of the home that we worked on was in the, the bathroom. So then we converted into slide outs. And now everything that was in that cabinet is now fitting in these, okay? And now everything can be seen within three of the slide outs to make that space easy to use, easy to find. And when you pull something out, you've got a hole you can put it right back in too, uh, versus having to put things back in place. Yeah, yeah. I keep my handguns near my sandwich bags also. I mean, it is Kansas, right? So... Okay, so we are going to take our bio break there after that great before and after. So please give Phil a hand and welcome him to the Empowered Senior Family. Thank you. Yeah. And he has his table with some of his demonstration items and some of his booklets. And I highly suggest please stop by and check it out because it's very cool. Thank you, yes, thank All right. you, Phil. And we don't have our dance break leader this month or next month, but she'll be back in June with beach balls. Sure. Should we do So it? let's do a little stretch. Yeah. Who wants to help lead us in, a, in some stretches? Oh. <laughs> I, I feel like that's a Brian thing, isn't it? No? no? <laughs> He's out. You know oh. what? Let's oh, at least sta a, stand up for just, oh, take a call. Stand okay. up for just a second Convenient. if you want to, and let's just take a deep breath. Let's just take our arms up. Fill up those lungs with air and let it out. And up we go again, filling up those lungs and let it out. If you want to, just kind of march your feet a little bit. So why do we do that? More oxygen flow helps with learning, helps with energy, and also that way people won't feel so bad if they sneak out to the bathroom. Yeah, take a bio break if you need it. it we don't take attendance that strictly. We're, we have a good time. Okay. All right. And those that are staying in the room, you can fill in the people that took a bathroom break because we're going to keep on going. We have more to cover, and we want to get you out there to the gardens. Oh, we're, we're doing good on time, aren't we? Yeah. Doing good on time and having fun, stretching. What do you guys do for exercise right now? What are some of the things? I'm going to come through. What do you do for exercise right now? Brisk walking. Brisk walking. How often do you do that? Four or five times a week. 30 minutes. How does that make you feel when you go out and take your walk four or five times a week? Does it make an impact on your happiness level? I just have to do it for health. Okay. And yeah, it's okay, but sometimes I don't want to do it. Sometimes you don't want to do it, but you go out there anyway. Do you, do you ever find yourself, you're out walking and you're thinking, I don't know why I'm out here, but I'm doing it. Like sometimes you just, almost doing it against your will, but you're getting it done, okay. And I find too that if you're grumpy, going outside is a good
good thing to do. Just get out of the house. Who else? What do you do for exercise? What do you do for fun activities? YMCA. YMCA. What do you like to do at YMCA? Uh, senior sneakers. Okay. Senior sneakers at the YMCA. Awesome. Who else? Who likes to get out and do something? Doug, what do you like to do every Friday, Saturday, and Monday night? Oh, I'll dance a little bit, you know, and stuff like that. And walk. I do walk and exercise bike and all that. Golf. Yeah. Play golf. <laughs> Plays golf and he gets out and goes dancing. Clyda, what do you do for workouts? I do Zumba. I do weights. I do stretch bands, and I go for a walk at the mall anytime I'm close by. Awesome. So you're really active. That's really awesome. How about you guys? I go for walks around my block. Walks around the block. And pickleball. Oh, and pickleball. We love pickleball. All right. What else do you guys do for exercise and activities? Do you get out and exercise, Frankie? I go to the Y. Okay, the y, y, the y. Uh, the one on East Douglas. Okay. And what do you like to do there? Uh, okay. Silver sneakers, as well as all the different machines. Does the machines and silver sneakers at the Y. Is that true? I don't know what we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> we're just talking about exercise in the YMCA. What do you do for workouts? Well, yesterday I mowed four lawns, did some landscaping every day, on and on. Yeah. Wow, you mowed four lawns. So you're really into spring sprucing. <laughs> I think the standby works the best. Okay. okay. So All right, so we've had some confusion about when is Downsizers Club. Yes. Oh, so it is. The Tuesday, oh, see, we oh, even changed Oh, that's that. why. It's actually the Thursday the oh, following. Now we know the problem. We are confusing people. Yes. I Whoops. I'm confusing people. Thursday following empowered seniors from 2 to 3. So a week from today at 2 o'clock at our east office, the 12021 East 13th Street North. It's there at K96 and 13th. And so join us to talk about downsizing and decluttering. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome if you RSVP, so we know kind of how many to expect. But if you don't, just come anyway. We've got books and binders ready to go. You get a really nice binder with a lot of good information. So it is not Tuesday. That slide is wrong. It is Thursday, next Thursday. So this is how we have things planned. The first Thursday of the month is Social Club. It's Ambassadors Club at our beautiful new location at K96 uh, and East 13th, and we will serve you lunch. It's your thing. It's your thing. And um, so we would love to see that take off, and you can do speakers, you can talk to each other about where to go dancing, where to join the Corvette Club, whatever it might be. Uh, it's your social club, your time to get together. And we'll provide lunch for you, or we can provide part of the lunch, and you can do potluck. You tell us what you want. We want you to do that. Then we do the seminars the second Thursday of every month here at Botanica, mm -hmm. sixth year, and we're going to be here every single month. Then the third Thursday is Downsizers Club. That is a totally different thing than this. This is like a big to-do, right? <laughs> it's a big to-do. Downsizers Club is just casual. You just bring your three-ring binder. We sit down in a room, and we talk about that room that nobody wants to clean out. Yeah, that vanity. So, and that's why this slide is up here. I, we normally do mention Downsizers Club every lecture that we give, but it's up here because we're talking about spring sprucing now, and so step one is to find a support system. So you're all invited to the free support system that we provide. But if that's not your thing, what's another way you could have a support system when it comes to tackling those hard areas in your home? Any, any suggestions? Friend? Friend? Uh, hire a mate. Hire it out. Hey, yeah. Hire it out. Yeah. That's leverage. That's, that's right. Leverage is people 
systems or tools? So who are people, what are systems, what are tools that you can use or purchase to help accomplish something? So, and I would invite you to think about it like working out, right? Or exercising or starting something new. So if Janice and I were gonna start working out together, then we would help hold each other accountable. Hey, I'm coming over, are you ready to go for the walk? Hey, meet me at the park every morning at this time and you're more likely to follow through because I don't wanna let Janice down. If Janice is getting up at six, then I better drag my butt out of bed at six because she'll be waiting for me at the park. So if you have an accountability partner, that's one way to do things and approach it a small piece at a time. So a support system, or like you said, hiring it out. Has anyone here ever used a personal trainer before when working out? Some, yeah, sometimes you get it with a new gym membership or as, as a, a gift or a perk. And were you more likely to show up and do the work because you were paying for it, right? So that's another way to have a support Plus they system. show you how to be more efficient, you get a yeah. better workout and it's yeah. safer. So but having a buddy helps. Help, sure. if, I mean, t for me to clean out my office at home, it's depressing. Mm -hmm. And so if a friend comes over to help, yeah. then it's kind of fun, especially if you get a glass of wine yeah. or maybe a nice coffee. Yeah. Hey, that's a support system. <laughs> yeah. So just don't go home today and go into that office or your kitchen or whatever room is your trouble room and just try to throw yourself at it without a support system because I don't want you to set yourself up for failure. And that's what Downsizers Club is, it's a support group. Mm -hmm. So it's a support group where we talk about um, how, you know, the things that we have going on at home and how to get our home ready for aging in place better, how to thrive and figuring out our plan B. So George, we're so happy to have you back. Uh, just a quick thing, uh, my wife hoodwinked me, so watch out when you go to this, because I brought a truck and a trailer. I thought if they cured all you guys, I would get their stuff. Didn't work out oh, that yeah. way. <laughs> Maybe we should do that in May or June. Like, bring in 10 items you don't want, and we'll do the Empowered Senior Garage Sale in here. <laughs> yeah, I'll just try to dump it off in somebody else. Yeah, we're all going by Goodwill after We live this. on a busy street, so sometimes we just put something we don't want out on the curb, and then right. we watch to see how long it takes for it to disappear. It works. Okay. Yeah, and you know what? That brings us to step two, come up with an action plan. And if your action plan is putting it by the end of your driveway, then more power to you. Um, but example action plan, pick a room that you're going to start with. It doesn't even have to be a room. Maybe it's that dreaded drawer. Maybe it is one closet in that room. Just pick something to scale to start with because what's going to happen if we try to do the whole house at one time, Janice? We're not going to complete it. <laughs> you said we're not going to complete it. You're going to reach that point where all your stuff is out and stacked up around you and then you for sure get that bottle of wine out. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, <laughs> set a deadline for completion and maybe tell your accountability partner. So I'll tell, I'll tell Janice, I really wanna get my guest bathroom done before next weekend. So she can say, hey, how's that going? How's that working for you? Um, set up staging areas for decision making. So, cause that's what's gonna happen, right? Everything we find, everything we touch, we're gonna have to make a decision about it. And it's so interesting what comes to mind. Oh, this postcard, my first boyfriend gave me this postcard. He was living in Dodge City, Kansas, and I was here in Wichita, and I would go see him, but not during harvest, because he was, you know, but all about this postcard, and then you're kind of sitting there going like, just make a decision about the postcard, lady. <laughs> but you're gonna have to decide, is this something that I keep, I sell, or I mail back to him in Dodge City. Because no. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with keeping it. Yeah. I think sometimes mm -hmm. when people think about editing their things, getting rid of things, sometimes they think about the things that are most important. Like I bought all these beautiful suits when we opened up the East Keller Williams. And to me, I mean, they're gorgeous. I just don't happen to wear them. So when I think about getting rid of stuff, I think about those suits. Well, what about all the other crap that's in the same closet up there or in my daily closet. And so sometimes we think about the biggest thing rather than the other stuff that we could easily get rid of. 
And so when, when you're ready to tackle this project, and I know some of us in the room have gone through downsizing, do you have a spot that's kind of your work area? Like for me, it's the bed. I make sure the bed is made, and then I set my donate, my keep, my cell on the bed and work there. Because you kind of do have to make a mess when you're digging into this. So does anyone else use a certain area as a staging area when it's decision time? Now, I've gone into homes where they did that, but then they never cleaned the bed yeah. off, and so they never yeah. slept I'll in the bed again. I'll sleep in some laundry. Yes? She uses her pool table downstairs. That is a brilliant use of a pool table. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice open area to look and lay things out and make a decision. Mm -hmm. She's... Pool, so that made me have to yeah. decide. She was saying how she has to, she can't leave the items on the pool table because family would be coming over to use it. So in a way, she created her own deadline, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, she created a yeah. system. Like, I will be forced to get my work done because I have to have it cleaned off before Easter company. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And you used your pool table to organize all your photographs and really did an amazing job, but that was how you guys did it. And that was kind of, it was a lot of work. Was it a lot of work to go through all those? Oh, indeed, but it was worth it. It was worth it because you completed, you completed that together as a couple. And that's what we're talking about is completing mature life tasks. That might be something to write down. Mature life tasks. And when you can do them with your spouse, that's really nice because then you're doing those things together and you can talk about the photos, you can talk about the postcards or whatever it might be together and you're checking that list off together. And we talk about what's the most loving move you can make and going through all the photo albums and the photos and organizing that, that was a, mo a loving move for each other because you got that done together as a united front and you feel good about it. And then the kids feel good because it's done and um, it's, things are labeled, and so it takes a lot of the work off of other people, too. Okay. I believe in recycling very heavily because it contributes to cancer. I am a cancer survivor. My husband is seven. I use three cardboard boxes. One uh, the thing about recycling, it's reduce, reuse, recycle. Okay, one box, of course, goes to my church for the grad sale. That is recycling and reusing. The second box, not quite sure. There is one box that I want to keep, but like a couple weeks later, I re. re I go through that again to make sure, are you sure you want to keep it? I, well, I'm over 80, I get forgetful. <laughs> no, that, that's a great point, and that brings up the next part, and that is pick a plan for your donation. And so you have a very specific plan for your donation. And two, you'll be more successful if you can pick a role for your donation that's close to your heart. Mm -hmm. There's certain organizations that work with veterans. There's certain organizations that, you know, through your church, your faith, a uh, humane society. So mm -hmm. um, pick something close to your heart, and you're more likely to get excited about making that decision. And I have to be nosy because I saw a very knowing look between Connie and Charlie a minute ago when they were talking about divvying up the pictures, and I just have to know what was going through your brain when you looked at Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I, are you two married? And I was over there waiting, and I thought, those two, that, that's years. a wife looking at a husband, yeah. te telegraphing something. I, can, mm -hmm. I know well, that from one wife to another, and well, I was like, I wish I knew. They per uh, participated in Downsizing Club, but oh, you were wow. almost fully done with your downsizing Woo! by the time you got in it. So we did, they have accomplished that, yeah, so the, the big chore. Uh, so one thing I want to say is that sometimes people really kind of overthink it mm -hmm. because um, it's maybe because of the holdover from the generation yeah. that didn't want to throw things out. And so point. you feel guilty 
But here's the thing, you're going to be healthier and happier. The clutter is chaos in your brain as well as in your house, and it's a burden. And sometimes just throwing something in the trash is the best place for it. Even if you realize there might be value attached, how are you going to really, does somebody really want it, and how are we going to find that person? Sometimes people have all kinds of different things they've been keeping, wires and bolts and and all this stuff would have value, except how the heck are we going to find the right person that would need it? Yeah. So sometimes the garbage um, is the best yeah. place and just be done with it. And then there's the big Goodwill debate. Well, I don't want to donate to Goodwill because I saw on Facebook that they're for profit. Let me tell you, does it feel good to drop stuff off at Goodwill? Yes, because you feel like I'm not wasting yeah. it. And they do a lot of good, actually. It, in the end. Oh, they're, they're going to... So behind you, Catherine, I've put up a slide. And when I made this slide, Catherine said, I feel personally attacked. <laughs> and I will say this about goodwill before we move on to the slide, but done is better than perfect. <laughs> if you cannot find the role of the, the donation that is al completely aligned with you, done is better than perfect. So being done with your downsizing is better than holding on to it and waiting for the perfect donation opportunity. When you said people you collect things like wires, I got two or three shells out in the garage. I'm one of those guys that walk through a parking lot and I'll see something uh -huh. and I'll pick it up and say, I could probably use that one of these days. <laughs> I want to have one heck of a garage sale <laughs> whenever. Yeah. Whenever is the key word. And isn't it the greatest moment when you think of that, oh my gosh, I've got that bolt. I'll yeah. be right back. Yeah. Three, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's better for the husband just to walk away <laughs> and let the wife keep the pictures that she wants. Oh, that was the look between the two of you, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say is don't assume that your children want any of your stuff. That's so true. We're gonna put that on a t-shirt. Thank you, Charlie, for that, yeah. Yeah, and you know, that's such a bummer, because you know, like, well, I've been keeping this china all this time. No, I haven't used it, but I thought maybe you would take it. Yeah, yep. So I have up here a practice exercise that I want everyone to help me with. Okay, can you wait just a second? We'll sure. get a couple, okay. Charlie, my wife has never lived down uh, throwing <laughs> away a little bottle of fine machine oil I had that was years old. That I ever, every now and then I need to find Vintage. something like that, and it's gone. She said she picked it up and threw it away. Can you imagine? <laughs> so, you know, if you travel, you have to be so careful that you remembered the toothpaste and your underwear and all that. But you know what? Probably wherever you're going, they have Walgreens, or Walmart, yeah. or Sam's, or something. So all this stuff can be replaced. But it's just some weird human quirk that we just need to hang on to all this stuff. And all it does is burden us. All my pictures are on my phone now, so they can yeah. have my phone. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell them there the code. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Problem solved. All right. So yeah. we got an exercise. Okay. So you're going to, up here, I have two pictures. Tell me, what are we looking at right here? Maybe a brand new set of Tea towels, the good tea towels, right? Yeah. Don't use my good tea towels. And then over here, what do we have? Everyday, Everyday tea towels or the ones you can almost see through when you hold them up to the window. They're still good. Yeah. So the question is, which group of towels should we keep? <laughs> so I hear some of each. Yep. Yeah. And so why don't you talk about that at your table? You guys duke it out at your table. Yeah. Which towels should you keep? Which Let's ones and how many of which ones, I guess? How many tea towels do you need?
Okay, this has to be the world's most liveliest debate about tea towels. That's why we have full drawers of tea towels, oh, because it is important. So do me a favor, raise your hand if you can fit one more tea towel in your drawer at home and the drawer closes. Whose tea towel drawer closes on the first try? <laughs> That's not a lot of hands, guys. That's not a lot of hands. Okay, we're gonna pick up on this table first. Which group of towels or how many of each? So Laura said they decided they would keep a little bit of both, and so how many is a little bit? What fits in the drawer? That is the best answer. <laughs> And if you move, you might have to make a different decision. Well, like, uh, if you're moving, maybe you do yeah. really make a choice, and then you only take the good stuff. What do you say? My wife told me she keeps all of them, and then when they get holes in them, they go to my garage yep. for shop breaks. Yep, that happens at my house, too. <laughs> or even if I try to sneak them into the trash can, he sneaks them out in their shop rags. Who loves to give tea towels as a gift? Make a great gift. Yeah. Who loves to receive tea towels has a gift. Yeah. All right, so it might seem like we're talking about something trivial, but there's so much emotion tied into it. Mm -hmm. And this is a real challenge. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And your kids probably think there's something a little cuckoo about you, <laughs> depending on how many you have. I just had a, I just had a thought. My house was built in the 50s, and I've been there... Uh, 50 years, so it's been well, way before that, and I wonder if the same drawers are there in the kitchen that were there f in the 50s when it was built. Do I need more towels than I did then? That, that's a good question. Are we doing more or less dishes these days? Probably less. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, and I know it depends on the size of the family. That's kind of, when I've posed this question to other people, they're like, well, how many kids? How many boys? How many girls? I catch my teenage boys basically giving themselves a bath at the kitchen sink with my tea towels. Yeah, <laughs> that's just as gross as it sounds. <laughs> you gotta love teenage boys. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're ready for an exercise. Okay, so when you have been doing your downsizing or decluttering, have you ever come across something that you were like, oh, I forgot about this and I'm so glad I found it. So have you ever been wading through the stuff, wading through the tea towels and found a treasure? Is there a treasure you've lost and you're looking for or you wish you could find? Yeah, anybody have, have something that comes to mind that they'd like to share? I knew you were gonna say that little He bottle wants of his machine, machine oil. oil. <laughs> yeah. As wives, we kind of get accused of hiding stuff from spouses. Yes, sir. We thought we had lost uh, U.S. saving bonds. For years, we couldn't find them, and I was researching how to get them replaced. And so we were moving a roll-top desk one day when we were moving, and they fell out on the floor. So, and then I lost him again. Oh, <laughs> then he lost him again. him again. But then he found him again. Yeah, so if, yeah, uh, U.S. savings bonds. So I think that is the literal definition of treasure. And I, that's what we've talked about. Life insurance companies kind of count on your life insurance policies being lost. Yeah. And that, that um, they don't have to make the payout. Mm -hmm. Hey, any other treasure stories? Okay, Ed's got one. out my car one time and found my keys to my car. I had been using my wife's keys for about 10 years, okay? <laughs> and they were in the back window as I was cleaning out the, the car. See, yep, you, when you start this task, you're gonna find some treasures like US savings bonds, car keys, small bottle of machine oil. <laughs> hey. So, then she could say, I told you I didn't throw that yeah. out. <laughs>
So when you are doing your editing, your cleaning, your decluttering, do you feel emotions? Yes. Which emotions come up most often? Relief. There's positive and negative ones, right? So relief, what else? Maybe guilt. Like, oh, my sister gave me these tea towels as a gift, mm -hmm. but I already have 485. <laughs> right? And you feel, it feels a bit wasteful sometimes getting rid of perfectly good stuff. Mm -hmm, which adds to guilt. Maybe yeah. joy because something that you found or remembered mm -hmm. um, brought back a memory. Um, a lot of sadness because everything in your home has some kind of memory attached to it. It has an idea or a dream attached to it. All the hobbies that you could do, but per, you just haven't done yet. And so sometimes we have to make choices. What am I really going to do? I could do all of these things, but I can't do them all. I won't yeah. do them all, so I have to pick and choose. And then, so you're letting go of dreams. Yeah. And so I have heard this description of emotions that I'm going to share with you. And keep this in mind when you take on the task of downsizing. So... Think of emotions as cars passing you on a street. You are sitting on a park bench and you are watching traffic. And your emotions are those cars, those buses. You are seeing them, you're acknowledging them, and then they are going on their way. So think about that when you are downsizing and you're feeling all those different things. We see them coming, we acknowledge them, we watch them go down the street and we have to move on. And also, Keep some affirmations handy. Now, some of us might feel that affirmations are silly. This is the Midwest, right? We don't want those touchy-feely emotion bleh, things. But um, you can say to yourself, my memories will remain long after their placeholders are gone. Because that's what those are. They're placeholders for the memories. So keep the memories and let the placeholders go. Yes, ma'am. I've heard that you can just take a picture maybe of the item, or maybe you received a special greeting card. Take a picture of it. Yeah. On your phone? Yes. Take a picture on your phone? Yeah. Is there a different way to hold on to this memory than just a box of stuff? Um, or it's okay to let things go. It's a natural cycle in life. We are not meant to hold on to every physical object gifted or given or purchased since we were zero years old. It's just, that's not what we're meant to do. But what about the 1986 barbecue sauce? We're keeping that. <laughs> it, it went to his house in Portland, Oregon with him. Packed that's up. what happens. People just put yeah. stuff on you. <laughs> All right, I think we have a comment back here. So I just retired, and my grand plan is to eventually get to that point where I start cleaning out holes. So... I'm in kind of a dilemma because it, my house is full, which is fine because then that way it keeps me from buying new stuff. <laughs> but I am in the process of coming up with places where I can donate my things. Mm -hmm. His Helping Hands, um, Habitat for Humanity. There are um, places for battered women. Yeah people who are trying to restart building a, a mm -hmm. home. Perhaps yeah. they've had a loss. They've had to leave home quickly or a fire. So there are resources where you can donate your things to another sure. practical person. And then you get to tie that positive emotion to giving away the placeholder, mm -hmm. right? And so you let that positive emotion wash over you and replace that negative emotion of parting with it. So that's a very great point. Thank you for sharing that. And think about how you part with things, too, that you're creating peace. Um, for example, when you put a house on the market, a lot of times, like Randy Ambrose will tell you, to create as many cleaned-off horizontal surfaces as possible. So you don't have piles of papers on the floor. You don't have too much stuff on the counter, things that you're not using every day or there because you just need them to be there. Uh, because they're, they're part of your decor. The less stuff you have, the better things look. And so when you let things go, you are gaining peace. And so sometimes if you think about instead of getting rid of things, I'm, I'm bringing myself peace. Sure, yeah. Let that positive emotion replace that negative emotion. Any questions? 
So you might have been thinking we'd give you a list of things how to spruce up, but you know what? This is all emotional, and so that's what we cover every month, are candid conversations talking about real things, because you could Google or ask ChatGPT um, for a list on what to do with stuff, but it doesn't help with the emotion of it. That to-do list, if you want it, it's waiting for you at Downsizers Club if you want to come see us next week, though. And we'd love to see you there, and people love Downsizers Club. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we have for you today. We really introduced the sponsors and Adult Day Centers, Catholic Charities. They've got a big event coming, so they couldn't be here today. She'll be back here next month. They're amazing. And uh, welcome to our new sponsor, Stay at Home Solutions, is another one where they do medical services and things at home, therapy at home. Yeah. Um, oh, here, this that one we right. had it right, third <laughs> Thursday of each month. That makes me feel good. We had, had it right on one thing. And we help with all kinds of things. So we, we want to help you. That's why we do this. And we want to help you get connected to the right resources. Be sure to fill out your feedback form so we can get better and better at answering your questions and providing the resources that you want. So let us know how we did today. Thank you, Bretta, for all of your organizi organizing today and keeping this thing going. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. In um, instead of a question, I have a share. Good. And so um, Sedgwick County is holding a free e-waste disposal event to be held in Sedgwick County. The Sedgwick County Environmental Resources Department will be collecting e-waste free of charge at the Sedgwick County West Yard in Southwest Wichita. Now the reason why this is important, and thank you for bringing this up, is that oftentimes you are charged a fee to get rid of electronic waste. You have to pay to get rid of a TV. You have to pay to get rid of a computer, printer, television set. You, and that it can be anywhere from 35 to $50. So this is a great event. So um, I'll tell you when it is in just a moment. It's next weekend. In, in two weekends. And we can, we can share this um, on our Facebook page, too, for yeah, if you follow yeah. us on Empowered, Empowered Senior. Empowered Senior Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, because I got some stuff I'm going to put in that. That's okay. Well, I'll find it, and we'll put it on there so that you all know, because that's, that's a great opportunity. Saves you money. Get stuff out of your house. Those are some of my favorite things. Okay. All right, so in May, we're doing a new topic. We're doing our first annual Empowered Senior Road Show. So we're bringing our camper, and who else is bringing campers? So we are going to do the first ever um, Empowered Senior Road Show, and um, Wind River RV will be bringing out some travel trailers for you all to look at, touch, smell, get in there, try the bed out, see if you can fit in the bathroom. Um, because there are so many health benefits to travel, right? And maybe now you're at that stage in your life where you've got a little bit of extra time to travel. So we're, the talk will be about the health benefits of travel. It'll be a brief talk. And then we're going to take the party out to the parking lot to where you can look at some different RVs. And we're also going to have some of our vendors providing snacks. And we're going to get outdoors and we're going to talk about travel and have some fun. Good. So... Please bring a friend. We would love it to be a successful event, seeing as how it's our first ever. You know, tell everybody that, yo, I can on that day. I'm going to a parking lot party. <laughs> how about party. that? Yeah, we could look out there, and then we could come back to the terrace and have a party out here on the yeah. terrace. Yeah. All right, so now it's time to tiptoe through the tulips. Please um, go out there and enjoy the gardens, even if you go out for yeah. just a moment. And again, mom and I were just out yeah. there, and it is really beautiful. So I have sh shoes to change into oh, so yeah. I can go out. Some comfy shoes. Yes, please enjoy the tulips today. Enjoy the gardens. Thank you to Botanica for letting us use the space. And I look forward to seeing you all next month. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, be sure to thank the sponsors or ask questions of them if they're still here. And uh, we appreciate you guys being here. We'll see you in May.